Hello everyone, I'm Han Dedo, a second grade graduate student at USTC, advised by Xiang Nanhe. It's my pleasure to present our paper in the Web Conference 2021. It's a joint work with NUS, NCSU, and Tsinghua University. The key idea of this paper is to prove that decoupled GCN is equivalent with label propagation. In the beginning, I want to talk graph-based semi-supervised node classification task. In this task, given graph structure, features of all nodes in graph, and labels of a part of nodes in graph, the goal is to predict labels for unlabeled nodes. Inspired by representation learning, Graph Convolution Network was proposed to solve this task. The key idea of GCN is to represent node embedding better by convolutional operation. In fact, GCN contains two important operations, neighborhood aggregation to aggregate neighbor embedding according to graph structure, and feature transformation to transform node embedding by one-layer neural network. One-layer neighborhood aggregation must be accompanied with one-layer feature transformation in GCN. We call this design in GCN coupling. The coupling design makes GCN hard to leverage graph structure deeply. To overcome the drawback, APPNP is proposed. APPNP firstly transforms feature into embedding by a neural network. This neural network is a conventional network and is not relevant to graph structure. Then APPNP propagates embedding several times according to graph structure. APPNP decouples neighborhood aggregation and feature transformation. The coupling is also adopted by other methods such as SGCN, DAGN, and LATGCN. And we name GCN with this design as decoupled GCN. Decoupled GCN is better than GCN and achieves the SOTA performance in many tasks. The embedding aggregation in decoupled GCN can be regarded as information diffusion according to graph structure. Another classical graph diffusion al diff graph information diffusion algorithm is label propagation. Label propagation diffuses label from source node to its neighbor. While decoupled GCN diffuses representation to target node from its neighbors. Both label propagation and decoupled GCN only diffuses information to first order neighbor. Therefore, information needs multiple diffusion to achieve high order, high order neighbor, such as from this node to this node, and then from this node to this node. In fact, the multiple diffusion is equivalent to one's direct diffusion to high-order neighbor, such as from this node to this node directly. Here show a comparison between label propagation and decoupled GCN. Decoupled GCN emerged much later than label propagation in 2019. Label propagation diffuses label information, while decoupled GCN diffuses representation information. Label propagation focuses on graph structure only, while decoupled GCN focuses on both structure and feature information, although they are proposed in different eras and differ in many details, they are also very similar. Is there any intrinsic relationship between them? Next, I will show that decoupled GCN is equivalent to label propagation.
traditional label propagation cannot utilize feature information. To overcome it, we propose the two-step label propagation, propagating label of training set to other nodes in graph first layer, and generate pseudo label for for other nodes. And then use both labels and pseudo labels to train the, a neural network predictor. Besides, the label and the, the labels and the pseudo labels can be reweighted. We name two-step label propagation with reweighting strategy as propagation and training, abbreviated as PT, because gradient descent is used in optimizing neural model. We calculate the gradient of PT and uh, decoupled GCN. By comparison, we find only citing the reweighting value WIJ in the in propagation and training. Then propagation and training is equivalent with, with this form. Then propagation and training is equivalent with decoupled GCN. The equivalence has been proved. The weight of decoupled GCN contains three steps. The first is static weight A, J, I, bar. According to graph structure, the second is dynamic weight F, I, H, J, according to neural network predictor and feature. The third is multiply static weight and dynamic weight and normalized weight term. What can we benefit from our analysis? First, it can help us understand, understand strengths and weaknesses of decoupled GCN. Second, it can provide intuitions to improve decoupled GCN. From our analysis, the strengths of decoupled GCN is revealed. First, pseudo label arguments data. Second, reasonable weight makes model more robust. Third, ensemble in the inference stage boosts the performance further. However, drawbacks of decoupled GCN are also revealed. First, whether dynamic weight can denoise depends on neural predictor. When the initialization is stable, suitable, it can guide the training. Otherwise, it will mislead the training. It indicates that decoupled GCN is unstable to initialization. Second, the normalization indicates that labels in the training site are equal which makes decoupled GCN sensitive to label noise. Next, I will introduce our proposed method. To overcome the weaknesses of decoupled GCN, we propose two designs about weight. First, remove normalization for allowing different weight in the training site. This design improves the robustness to label noise. Second, add adaptive factor gamma to dynamic weight. Gamma is determined by current epoch E and a hyperparameter epsilon. At the beginning of training, model is not reliable. Gamma equals zero, and the model and the the model where dynamic weight FIHG has no effect. With the training goals going, with the training going, the model becomes more and more reliable. Gamma increases, and the role of model aware weight is more and more important. The two design makes the model more stable and robust to label noise. Due to adaptive factor, we name the improved model pro the model propagation and training adaptively. 
abbreviated as PTA. In fact, PTA has a concise matrix form. It only from this form, it only needs to do twice element-wise matrix product in the training stage. But decoupled GCN needs to aggregate neighborhood several times. So besides the, uh, the above advantage, PTA is more efficient than decoupled GCN. Next, I will introduce our experiments. We conduct experiments on four data sites in terms of accuracy. The table shows the information about the data sites. By experiments, we explore four, five questions. Our paper analyzes analyze why decoupled GCN works well. So we verify whether our analysis is rational in the first question. We then verify the effectiveness of our proposed PTA in the second question. Besides, based on our design and analysis, PTA has three advantages. Therefore, we validate, we validate the three advantages respectively in the last three questions. Comparison, compared with MLP, APBNP contains four components, label propagation, graph-based weighting, model-based weighting, and ensemble. By ablation study, we can testify whether the four components are all useful. This comparison is about ensemble. This is about model-based weighting. This is about graph-based weighting. And this is about label, pro label pro propagation. From the four comparisons, four components in APPNP are all useful, and the label propagation and the graph-based weighting contribute the most. Now let's see how our proposed PTA further improve APPNP. The table shows overall comparison of different models. According to According to this table, the performance of PTA is best. By random experiments, we draw box plot for different models. Among them, PTA, high, PTA has the smallest box. This validates that PTA is stable to initialization. This is a simulation experiment with regard to label noise. With the increase of increasing of label noise, the performance of PTA decreases less. This experiment can validate that PTA is robust to label noise. In the last, we compare the efficiency of PTA and APPNP. We find that PTA is much faster than decoupled GCN, both per both per epoch time and uh, total training time. In this work, we prove, we, we prove decoupled GCN is a special case of propagation and training. This insight can explain why decoupled GCN works well, including data augmentation, reasonable waiting strategy, and, and ensemble. With our analysis, the weakness of the coupled GCN are also revealed. To overcome them, we propose a new graph learning algorithm. Algorithm, PTA experiments support our analysis about the coupled GCN and prove the superiority of PTA. I will share three or three promising directions as future work. First. How to extend PTA to link prediction and graph classification task. Second, this paper concern decoupled GCN only. How to, how to give theoretical analysis about general GCN. Third, design better weighting strategy for, uh, for propagation and training is also useful. This is the reference of this presentation. We also release our code in GitHub. Thanks for your listening.